Hey guys, Anthony here with Empire Music and EmpireMusicOnline.com and uh, today showing you I think a model that might have just kind of slipped through the cracks on us. We were going over the bases in the shop and realizing that uh, you know what we had and didn't have content for. And uh, this is the, the Players Series Mustang Bass uh, PJ. So it's a P and a J configuration um, on it. And uh, yeah, I, maybe we shot this and it just got lost or uh, I don't know what happened to it, but I could have swore I shot it. Um, but here it is. These are super cool bases, and uh, obviously great finish on this particular one with the Fire Miss Gold. I always love this finish. Um, if, if you've seen any of my videos before that we, when we talk about a short scale instrument um, and, and the advantages of it, there's no, obviously there's no real disadvantage to it. Um, when I think of a short scale instrument, the first thing that kind of pops into my mind is the feel of the instrument. And, and because you have the shorter scale length, in this case, it's 30 inches um, from not to bridge saddles. And um, if you don't know what regular scale is, that's or long scale, which is quote unquote regular scale, <laughs> uh, but long scale is uh, 34 inches. So like a typical precision bass or J bass um, would be 34 scale. So that's 34 inches from nut to bridge. Some extend beyond that, so you'll see like some five string basses will have 35 scale, extra long scale. Add that extra inch on there because that B string is so heavy that you need that, that extra tension on there to kind of make that thing sound uh, good. However, that's not always the case because you see it's like some Federas and like, I know that like the Fender five string stuff's usually still 34 scale. So there are exceptions to that, it's no like real rule. Um, so typical bass would be 34 and then you have medium scale, which is 32. Um, at the time that this gets posted, I should have a Jaguar Squire bass up um, on the YouTubes and um, that's a 32 scale. So what happens when we start changing scale length is how soft the strings feel to your hand. So in the case of a, of a short scale instrument, 30 inches, you don't have as much tension because that string isn't pulled quite as tight because um, it's just not the same length. So the tension set's different. Um, I guess if you looked at like how many pounds of, of tension are on there, it's a lot less with a, a short scale instrument. So what I find instantly when I think of short scale is A, how when playing down here, it tends to absorb the shock of your hand a little bit more. So you kind of have to exert a little bit more effort, if that makes any sense, because there's less resistance on the string, whereas a longer scale instrument, there's um, more resistance from the string because it's, uh, it, it's tighter. So I feel like I can actually play like faster things better on a, a longer scale instrument because of how that tension feels. We're here, this kind of like begs for whole notes and for, for big, long and, and, and slower, kind of like slower playing. I know that's not really exactly how it works when you get it into your hands, but I just think of that when I think of a short scale instrument. Now, um, so that's not really an advantage or a disadvantage, it just kind of is what it is. And along with that feel change, you have kind of a, a sonic change that goes on with the instrument too, because now all of a sudden, you have a string that's vibrating differently than something in a longer scale. So well, you have the same exact pickup in there. The way that it's disrupting that magnetic field that each pole is, is the, how it produces the sound is different too. Essentially that string is vibrating it wider rather because again, it, there's not as much tension on it. So, you know, if you look at that, if, you know, if you slow that down and we're at the microscopic level, so to speak, you'd see that string moving a lot more than uh, something that has more tension on it. This is confusing, isn't it, guys? I know. Um, but that's kind of what I think of when, as soon as I start thinking about a, a, a short scale instrument. Now, 
advantages just strictly from a physical perspective. If you are a beginning bass player, um, you're just a, a smaller build, um, smaller hands, short scale is great because essentially everything's kind of compacted on you. The space between the frets is smaller. Um, the distance that this hand has to go out is it, it's closer to you. Um, and then if you're a guitar player that you know, doesn't own a bass and just wants something cool for the studio, it's a great option too because it, it, the scale length isn't so foreign from what you know, you're already playing in like you know, 24 and a half, 25 inch or you know, whatever your scale length might be on your guitar. So there's multiple benefits to having it or multiple reasons that someone might be looking for a short scale bass. And if you're a bass player that plays, you know, the big six string boutique active bass or you play a five string or you just play four string standard scale, adding something like this into your arsenal really gives you another dimension of sound. Um, you go to a session, go to a gig, it's always worth having something like this with you because the, the kind of mid-range punch and, the, and, the, and the, the, that, that different tonality that, that a short scale instrument can provide might fit a track perfectly. Um, so a lot of cool reasons to, to put a short scale bass in your arsenal or for it to be your first bass or just your next bass. Um, so long winded explanation there I know. Thank you for bearing with me if you're still watching. Um, but. P and a J pickup configuration in it, and um, inch and a half at the nut. So basically, jazz bass neck, it's got a standard C profile on it, Palfaro fretboard, cheaper rosewood. Sounds very, very similar to it. One way to keep the cost down, I think these, these guys come out under 700 bucks, they're great bases in, in that case. Uh, but uh, pickup switch, so you don't have like a blend knob, you have front pickup, both pickups bridge pickup. Uh, volume, volume. I'm sorry. Yeah, volume tone. So volume tone. So P pickup, that's what I was playing in the intro. That's We get kind of typical P bass tone, but with a, the, kind of the short scale vibe to it. So I always feel like lower mid range is kind of pushed a little bit more on, on a bass like of this size. So uh, we'll check that out real quick. I have tone all the way back. That's not going to work for sounding very good. All right, tones all the way up. forget too like when I'm playing a short scale instrument it's so sensitive to where you move obviously any bass is um, as bass players I think it's very wise to pay attention to where you're attacking um, but even if you just I'll do that again real quick so right over the pickup right there's that tone I'm moving back this pickups off right now it's pretty big difference there we go all the way up. Obviously it's softer, but there's a big sonic difference just in one pickup on, tone all the way on, and where I'm attacking. We put that into my favorite things, uh, hands here, or into my hands, I guess. sound of a pick on short scale instrument too something about that I always really dig so okay we'll go just bridge pickup now further. Thank you. 
so there's a noticeable tone difference between the two pickups. The, 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 the bridge is, has a little like thinness to it. And I don't mean that in a bad way, just kind of because it's back further. You know, there's a noticeable drop of low end that comes out of it. There's a little bit of a gain loss too. But what's cool is, especially when you're playing with a pick, is you can kind of get into like that sort of out of phase tone just because it thins out a little bit. It obviously will cut through a mix really well. Um, and it might not be suitable for, for everything, but there's gonna be a time and a place where like you want that kind of out of phase or that kind of, that, that thinner sort of sound. So I like a bass that can kind of give that to me. Um, now some might, might disagree with that, but if you play with effects pedals as much as I do in a, in a real world setting, it's great to be able to really have a different um, kind of gain structure right from the instrument that's gonna get into those pedals differently and you know, it's gonna affect overdrives and, and, and modulation effects and, and tracking effects like octave pedals and things like that differently, so really cool. Um, and then wide open, both pickups. Keep that there. I'm gonna roll some tone off a little bit. I think for my money. All day long, I'd be front pickup, just straight P. So a wide, wide range of sounds you can get out of something like this. There are just a lot of fun to play too. If you're used to playing standard scale stuff, getting a short scale in your hands, it's just fun. It just kind of evokes you into playing some different things. Um, so like I said, wide, wide range of tones. I think in a typical musical setting, I'd be using that P pickup most of the time, but it's really nice to be able to blend in that bridge pickup or to solo that bridge pickup and you start to get into just a whole nother world of sound. So for a budget friendly bass, these come in under 700 bucks. Um, the Player Series Mustang PJ bass um, from Fender, fantastic buy for a lot of different reasons. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit subscribe uh, on YouTube, share it around Facebook. Tell, tell your friends and family about us. We appreciate that. You can call me here at the shop personally. It's three, four, uh, 412 area code. Might help guys. We're in the 412 here. 412-343-5299. It's anthony at empiremusiconline.com is my email. You can email me directly any questions that you have. We are certainly here to help. Thanks.